Forget the treasure hunts, let's talk about the real detective work, the science behind the Copper Scroll. Since its discovery, experts have asked, what is this object? Who created it? And why? To answer that, researchers from multiple fields, metallurgy, linguistics, archaeology and paleography, have worked for decades to unravel the scroll's secrets. The scroll is made of 99% pure copper, mixed with traces of tin. That's not normal for ancient texts, which were usually ink on parchment or papyrus. Writing on metal was rare and expensive. According to metallurgical analysis done in the 1950s, the copper was hammered into thin sheets about one millimeter thick, then rolled up. But centuries of oxidation made it so brittle it couldn't be unrolled without shattering. So in 1955, it was sent to Manchester, England. There, Professor H. Wright Baker carefully sliced it into 23 strips using dental tools. That's how we were finally able to read it. Next came handwriting analysis. Paleographers studied the script style and compared it to other texts from the region. According to this research, the scroll was written between 25 and 75 CE, during the late Second Temple period. The script closely resembles inscriptions found on Jewish ossuaries and coins from that time. Linguists also got to work. The Hebrew used in the scroll is not poetic, it's practical. Scholars call it early Mishnaic Hebrew, the kind used for everyday records and legal documents. It includes rare words, even some Greek letters, which may be abbreviations or numerals. This language style adds to the theory that it was created by someone with administrative duties, perhaps a treasurer or record keeper. And then came modern imaging. The surface of the copper was badly corroded, making many parts of the text hard to read. But in the 1990s and 2000s, new imaging techniques like high-resolution photography and three-dimensional digital scanning revealed previously hidden lines of text. These advances confirmed that the scroll is authentic, not a modern forgery. Geographic research, that's the hardest part. The scroll gives specific locations, but they're often vague or refer to ancient landmarks we can't find today. Archaeologists have tried matching the descriptions to real places using GIS mapping and historical records, but so far, no definitive match. According to recent studies, even if the treasure is real, the locations may have changed drastically due to erosion, construction or political restrictions, so what do scholars agree on? According to most experts, the Copper Scroll is authentic and ancient. It was likely written around the 1st century CE, it doesn't match any other Dead Sea Scroll in tone or content, and its purpose is still up for debate. So what's the final verdict? In Part 11, we'll bring it all together. Is the Copper Scroll a treasure map, a historical record or something more symbolic? Don't miss the final episode, follow, like and stay curious.